Okay, sorry about that. My, like, uh, my recorder, my phone went and stopped recording. Um, but like I say, crochet hooks. This is a nine, this is a five. They're very, very, very small. They need to be very small so that they can pull through the holes in the wig cap. So use teeny weeny ones like this. You can get these at a craft store. So that's really it for a lot of your styling. Um, your more extended stuff, if you're gonna be doing really fun stuff to your wigs. But I will say uh, another great thing to own is rollers for setting your wigs, which is a way of saying adding curl to your wigs. And you're going to be using, for those, you would use these, which are roller clips, to clip the rollers down. I think that roller setting a wig is the best way to style it, because the synthetic hair, you can wet it down when it's set with a roller set, and then blow, blow it dry with a blow dryer, or put it in a hot area and let it air dry, and it will form into nice little ringlets for you. And you won't have any worry about frying your hair, which is what's going to happen with if you're using things like, you know, uh, curling irons, so no curling irons. I would say buy rollers, roller sets. These are the things that a lot of people call them curlers. They're little plastic tubes. You can get them at Sally's. You can get a whole big kit of them at Sally's for about 20 bucks and have every roller you'll ever need. They're great for adding a height at the top, or you can even use them to make a straight wig into a curly wig if you take the time to do it. Um... So now I want to move on to showing you some things. One of the things I want to show you first is how to detangle a wig. So here's me, here's my wig. You see I've already got it on a stand like this. Um, I've got it mounted up on my stand. I probably should pin it, but I don't want to go get my sewing pin, so I'm going to just leave it on there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to use a little bit of my leave-in conditioner and I'm not going to spray it all over. I'm just going to lightly, well, should be lightly missed it on there. I think this might be my one that has a goofy bottle like that or your fabric softener or whatever. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm using a pick, but take a wide tooth, your, your wig comb, whatever your implement is, and you're going to take and you're going to start at the very bottom of the wig. As you can see, this is the very bottom of the wig and you're going to hold all this hair in your hand like a ponytail. And you're gonna start and you're gonna put your pick in there and you're gonna start picking it through. And now you see, if you start at the bottom, all the knots that are at the bottom will just come right out. And what I'm doing is you can see, I'm not putting any tension on the wig scalp. This is what helps keep your wigs from losing all their hair from being brushed too hard. So then once you've gotten your bottom combed out, you're gonna move your hand up a little bit and then you're going to kind of with a gentle picking motion, you see I'm not pulling it through, you're going to continue to pull through the hair and pull the knots out just very lightly. And you see I'm not using a lot of force. A lot of times too you might wind up wanting to do a little bit at a time. So again, starting at the bottom, see there's not was knots down there, you're going to comb and you can see I'm always starting at the bottom. I'm not pulling it through. See already 12 inches of hair is tangle free. So I'm going to move up and I'm going to hold the next piece of hair in my hand tightly so that again, tension does not come up here. It just hits my hand and I'm going to pull and gently comb all this out. See, if you do it gently, everything just combs right out. No knots, no snaggles, no craziness. You don't hear the hair breaking or feel it breaking. I'm going to keep working my way up, like so. And if you hit any resistance, like for instance, if you start up here and you go, oh, I feel a knot, don't push on the knot. Go a little bit below and comb out below it some more before you start worrying with it. Now, if you do get, you know, most of the way through your wig or whatever, and you run into an area with a knot. Let's pretend I have a knot. Let's actually, I probably do have a knot right here. So like right here, okay? What you're gonna wanna do is separate where the knot is for the most part away from the hair. You're gonna brush through this, the part that's not knotted. And then you're gonna come up and hold it in your hand and very gently, don't pack it down, but very gently pull at the bottom part of where the snarl is and just fork your way up there. And if you get caught, you can pick it like that. You don't want to jerk it down, you just want to kind of lightly pick it out. 
So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of this wig. We're going to comb it out perfectly smooth. So here I have this side. Again, I'm holding it so that it doesn't get pulled on the scalp. And see, the knot starts about down here. So I'm going to pull this part, comb this part. I'm not going to comb so that it pulls on the scalp. And you can see I'm using really gentle motions. There's no reason to be rough. You should treat wigs very gentle. Treat them much gentler than your own hair. Now when you get towards the part of the hair you can no longer hold in your hand, what you're going to do is put your hand on the wig firmly. And starting it where just you can just barely see it starting to knot, what you're going to want to do is pull those knots out. And as you can see, I'm being careful not to start too high because I don't want to force the knot. I don't want to compact any knots into tangles that are worse. So just go through. And when you comb near the scalp of a wig, don't stab it into it like this. You'll just catch the fiber. Just take it and kind of like follow the shape of your wig form or your head like this. And that way you won't catch your netting underneath and your wig will just beautifully comb right out. And see, look at this. I have almost a quarter of the tangles I started with. And you can see it didn't take me that long. Now granted, this wasn't that tangled. It was just a little tangle for me waving it around. But keeping them not very tangled is key. So now I'm going to move to the other side. Like this. And I'm going to detangle here where it's a little tangly still here. And you can see when I brush or comb, I'm really gentle. And if I encounter any resistance, I don't push it down. I just lightly pick it out. See here, there was a little resistance, so I pick instead of forcing it through. If you do get a really bad knot in a wig that you cannot brush out and it just doesn't seem to want to come loose, um. I'm going to go ahead and say do not break it out because you will cause this really horrible twirly effect on your hair that doesn't go away. It will make it like warp. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to cut it out and just separate the knot away from all the other hairs on the wig completely like this and take a pair of scissors and just cut it. Just cut the strands of hair holding it. Um, obviously don't do that if it's a huge mat and you're going to cut a chunk out. But if you have a knot that's a smaller knot, better to do that than to uh, jerk it out and rip and twist and hurt your fibers. So you can see I've really already, in just a short period of time, I have really combed this wig out and it's smooth and smooth and beautiful again. So here we go. Very smooth. Even the long length is pretty smooth. I like to run my hands through it as I go to make sure I didn't miss anything, but. See, even the length of the wig is smooth and has no more tangles in it. And you're going to want to keep your wigs like that. And in order to do that, when you store them, what I'm going to want you to do is you're going to take your wig and you're going to put it on your shelf. I'm putting mine on a mannequin stand. And you're going to take the hair and make a ponytail, but not a tight one. And then you're just going to take it, and I like to just kind of lay it around in a loose circular shape on your shelf or whatever like that. That is a way you can store the long hair wigs without making a tangle. I know it's probably kind of hard to see that, but I just have like a little circular, like a twirly, curly shape going on. That way you don't get them tangled and also you're not putting any kinks in them. So that's a great way to do that. I guess I'll turn Derpa cards so you can you can see them, right? Okay, so, um, that's really it for wig care that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, wig styling, one other thing I forgot to mention this, by the way, is um, when you're styling a wig, if you need a lot of a uh, hold, this is what I use. This is Pump It Up Gold. You can use other products. I like this. I think it's great. It's awesome for making like things stick up straight, like anime hair stick up straight, good stuff. Um, another wig tool you're going to think about using if you're doing a lot of styling is going to be right here. 
This is a blow dryer, of course, and you can see here on the end I have a concentrator nozzle. Um, and this is a diffuser. I like these because if you don't have a wig dryer, sometimes you want to dry a wig, but you can't blow all the hair everywhere. Use this. It's great. It's not going to blow the hair. It just makes it warm without causing wind. This is going to cause wind, but only in a very concentrated area. So this thing, good. Diffuser. This thing, also good. Concentrator nozzle and a little blow dryer. This is a nice blow dryer, but any blow dryer will do that gets pretty warm. Um, so that's really it for wigs, but I did want to mention some things here. Um, if you're doing a lot of stuff with wigs, you're going to find yourself probably wanting to add more and more kind of highlights and stuff. Some things we can use to do that is, um, we can use hair extensions, weft, which is called wefts of hair. This is basically just hair extension fiber right here. Now this one is tangled. It doesn't matter. It, uh, it'll comb out, but this is tangled. This is a uh, human hair, I believe. Yeah, this is human hair. I can tell by feeling it. Um, and it's on a weft right there. You can see this is the weft that everyone talks about, the weft part right there, little seam area where the hair is sewed down. Um, I bought this and I used some of it and I always save it because, you know, I haven't used this on my head yet. It's perfectly good. But if I need to put blue highlights in a wig one day or blue highlights in a hair piece, well, now I have the wefts to use. So that's some human hair and that's wefted hair on a weft. Now, hair comes in every shape, size, color, form. This is straight, this is human, and it um, looks to me like a 12 inch, approximately, okay? And this is probably medium grade hair, I would say, maybe even low grade human hair, um, just judging by the feel of it and the looks of it. But you can get all different grades. The, the best to me is to stick with the lower stuff because it's cheap. You're gonna spend a lot of money if you're getting really high quality hair. Um, here is some black human hair that's also straight. This looks to me like it's probably 14 inch. But I mean, this is great. This would be, you know, um, maybe you could do Alucard. Maybe his hair needs to be bigger. Well, take you some wefts of hair and put it in your wig and I'll show you how to do that in other videos. There you go. You made his hair way bigger and it's fuller and thicker. It's more Alucard. Um, uh, you can also get hair that's on tracks or wefts that is in different sizes and styles. Like this is a curly hair and this is kind of like a brown. This is a synthetic hair, I remember that. Um, and you can see it's on the track and it's just like a tight, kind of a tighter curl. They have different names for all the curls. You can also buy what is called loose extension fiber or what I call braiding, they call braiding hair. Um, this is straight braiding hair. And this is what I have been using to add highlights to this wig. But um, you can get uh, kinky or it's called a jumbo braid braiding hair, which is like has like a curly, really tightly curled texture. You can use that to make dreadlocks or make a lot of fluffy hair effects. Uh, you can get braiding hair as pony hair, which is in curls and different, like every texture it comes. But they call it braiding hair because it is loose. I don't know if I have one, you can see the loop, but this stuff is not, I don't have one. This stuff is not on a, on a track. It's just loose, long pieces of hair that's been folded over. So that's what I use for doing the highlights and lowlights and stuff, great stuff. You can actually sew it into tracks as well. Um, a lot of times you'll get hair in different lengths for making a full, like a full weave. This is a four piece. I used some of it already for a weave I did, but um, you can keep all this stuff and save it. This is Spanish wave and this is, it's a, it says 100% human. It's probably medium to high grade. Okay, medium grade, judging by the price. Medium grade human hair. Um, it's in like a brown and black because they do sell hair that's not all one color. I'll pull this out so you can see. This is a mixed hair in which the hair is not solid color. It's, you can see it's got different colors in it. So you can get hair like that too with all kinds of natural different mixes and highlights and stuff. Um, and then right here I have a, a deep ripple hair which is a dark brown. This is a dark brown I have. It's a deep ripple. I think that certain kinds of curl you're gonna find are actually very Lolita. 
like I think the deep purple is kind of a nice Lolita curl so you could use this stuff to make yourself your own uh, Lolita like Udongo bun type you know ponytail things or whatever um, and you can use it to add to your Lolita style wigs or whatever so you know be on the lookout buy hair and whatever you do don't throw it away if you don't use it because you'll probably use it for something or at least I always do and I wanted to mention too that um see here's another different a slightly different this is a, a long a longer curl a looser curl but here's another loose curl wave this is a piece of 14 inch from a multi a layer pack um and like I said you can get hair in bright colors as well usually so here's red I showed you the blue um I've always had trouble finding green and you tend to have trouble locally finding like white and silver but you can order um white and silver hair wefts I actually have some in the mail now for this in synthetics off of some websites um what I'm going to recommend to you for that is epiccosplay.com they have awesome awesome stuff so that's really about it um I'm gonna cover some styling and some other tips like that in a future video and I'll be showing you more of the things I know about wigs and I hope you have fun enjoying everything and I hope my tutorials have been useful I just wanted to deliver a shout out to the person who wanted me to do this video. Her name is um, Jessica and she is of Tip Princess Cosplay fame. I met her pretty recently. Hi Kitty. Kat says hello. Um, say hello Aces. He says hi people. Um, I met her pretty recently in a convention, a local convention. She does some great cosplays. She's done awesome stocking cosplay. It was great. It was epic. So in any case, Check out that, check out Tep Princess Cosplay on Facebook, and uh, check out my other videos on highlighting, and I also have one on making three-dimensional patterns for armor pieces. Stay tuned, because I will be making more and more how-to videos every few days. Peace out. How do you like that? Sailor Moon style peace out. Peace out, guys, and happy cosplaying.